Hi everyone, this is Brittany from By Brittany Goldwyn. I post videos about plants and projects. And today it is a beautiful day here in Maryland Zone 7A. It's November 11th when I'm filming this and it is hot and sunny out. It is 100 degrees in this greenhouse right now, probably about 70, 75 degrees outside. It's a very unseasonably warm for mid-November. Um, we also just got rain last night. Lots of rain for the first time, first measurable rain and somewhere between like 36 to 40 days. So we've had a serious dry spell here. All of our rain barrels have been empty for a couple weeks now um, and since we got a bunch of rain last night I figured now will be a good time to take you on a tour of all of the different spots in our yard where we are collecting rainwater, um, talk about the different types of barrels and vessels we have collecting rainwater, the pros and cons of each, and then also talk about some rainwater irrigation we have going on. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's head to the first rain barrels we set up. These are the ones up near the sunroom, the side of the house. Um, and first we set up one rain barrel. We loved it so much that we set up two more. So I will walk you through that setup now. So this is the series of the first barrels we set up. We set up this one first and then we realized it emptied so quickly that we set two more up. And as you can see, these are pretty standard rain barrels. They're flat back so they can be up against the house. They have a little screen here for filtering. They have overflow at the top. I believe the brand of these is RTS Home Accents, I think. Um, and I think we got them off of Amazon because it's really hard to find places nearby that actually sell rain barrels. Um, so as you can see, these are daisy chained together. So the water comes down through the gutter here. It goes into this one and then it goes out here and then fills all of these up from the bottom. So my husband added this sight gauge here too, which I actually thought I would not love as much as I do, but it's really nice just to be able to glance at it to see exactly how much water is in it. You can see it from inside too. So it's kind of fun being an old person and watching the rain barrels fill up when it's raining. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty basic setup here where it gets a little not so basic is down here we have another filter that you may have noticed. So in addition to filling with the watering can right here, which is what I primarily use these for, um, these three barrels also can go through here. This tube feeds into this container and there is a battery in there, a pump, battery operated pump, which then um, feeds into that tube. So you can see that tube is buried, goes lightly buried under the mulch here and then pops up right here on this bed. And then there is a tube that goes down the middle with just these little adjustable heads on here to adjust the flow of the water. And then it's lightly buried here between these two beds, pops up again right here. And then there is another line going down this bed. So we did decide to not extend this irrigation system for the rainwater um, to the other beds, just because these rain barrels empty so quickly. Like if you've ever collected rainwater, I'm sure you know exactly what I mean. Um, they empty a lot faster too when you are using them with irrigation. Um, I have a whole how-to on this complete setup on my website because it's kind of challenging to walk through everything here. Um, but this is a solar panel up on the roof. And again, I have details on that on, um, on my website. And you can see there's also a small little filter at the very top there, right where the gutter um, meets the downspout. And that solar panel powers, the, the wire goes down here, and then it powers the pump that is in this container. So we have it attached to a remote, and all we have to do is click the remote once, the remote will power on the pump and then begin feeding water from these three rain barrels underground to these two beds, which man, that is super, super duper convenient to have when it's like 100 degrees outside and I don't really feel like watering even in the morning and I just wanna like make it go faster. So I can turn this on from the window right here and then set a little timer for myself to remember to turn it off. Because yes, it is extremely important that you remember to turn it off when you're done using it or else it can burn out the pump if you empty the barrel and then keep the pump running. 
And then back here we have the most recent one we added to the collection. This one was earlier this spring. And this one is less of a barrel, more of like a bladder. Um, but I don't like calling it a bladder, so we just call it the green barrel. Um, you can see it's made out of like a very, like it's sturdy, but it is like a cloth vinyl here. Um, and when I first took it out of the package, despite the reviews, I was extremely skeptical about how well this would hold. Um, I do have to say, if it gets under like maybe this amount right here, you will see these plastic holder thingies. You can see the feet down here. They will kind of go in and collapse on itself. So we do like to keep this one up to about here. This is the one that we generally are using last out of all of the different barrels. Um, and I'll show you the flow here. Even though this one is completely full, like I don't even know why there is a faucet on this side because the drip is so slow. I never use this one. I always grab a five gallon bucket and turn this one on. As you can see, it's a great stream coming out of the bottom. I fill up five gallon buckets and then carry them over to the garden. For this one, we just have a diverter up there and a tube that comes on down and then drops into the top of the bladder here. Um, and then for overflow, there's an overflow on the side and we already had a buried gutter line diverting water away from the house. Um, so we just ran another tube with a clamp on it so it stays put all the way down and then stuck it into that buried line so that any overflow will come out of here into there. Um, and then we can also, if we wanted to, we can switch that diverter uh, on and off and that will help us with winterizing things this winter. And I am going to unzip this a little bit just to show you guys, this literally is just a giant vessel of water. Um, this is kind of like our overflow supply. I used this last, um, but this one I've emptied, I think twice this summer, maybe three times. Um, it holds, I think this is 200 gallons, but don't quote me to that. Um, this may be 250 but it's probably 200. It doesn't look like 250 to me. Um, and then we have it sitting here up on what is essentially a small deck. This would not do well sitting on an uneven surface. And since we wanted it over here, we knew we had to, had to build some sort of structure to keep it stable. Um, so we just did this like you would any other deck. We dug four holes, poured some concrete, put some footers in, and then built a structure, uh, grabbed some leftover treks from a previous project that my dad had and slapped it on the top. And this has worked out really well for us this year. Um, you know, it's not a perfect solution. It doesn't look the best. It's not the most structurally sound, but we haven't had any issues with it this summer. And I have to say the price tag for this was way better than like a $500 tank, which is what we were originally looking at. So I will link this below for you to check out if you are interested in a cheaper solution that holds a lot of water. So the last one that I'm taking you over to show you is the rain barrels that we put on the back of the greenhouse, which I am really excited about these. I use these all the time. We did not want to run the hose inside of the greenhouse because the hose is so close to the greenhouse that I figured if I needed it, I could just pull it inside. But in reality, I really want to be relying as much on the rain barrels and rainwater as I can. So I'll show you those. Now. So I did a more in-depth look at this greenhouse in my greenhouse tour video, but you'll see up here, we just literally screwed it up there with this regular black gutter and tucked it under this piece of metal on the greenhouse. Um, and then we have a downspout over here and used a scrap piece of gutter to pop it out and keep it in place so that it would go directly into these rain barrels. Now, these two rain barrels are, I believe, the same brand as the brown ones up front, um, RTS Home Accents, but they are black. And I'm pretty sure I just got these because they were significantly cheaper when we went to order them compared to the brown ones. And I really don't care because they're back here. But we did the same model with um, cinder blocks and pavers to put them up and daisy chain them together. And for this one, we just have a little spout that I can put a watering can under to fill them up. These do not feed anywhere else. Um, so I love this whole setup here. The only thing that I will say, it is a plus and a minus. So these, these filters screw in, 
which means I can't easily like take them off to look in to see how much water's in there because we didn't put a sight gauge on these. But that also means that I feel like they don't fly off when we get crazy rain and it probably keeps more stuff out of the rain barrels. So even though this is only a six by nine greenhouse, these capture a crazy amount of water for the surface area that they're pulling off of. Um, I have emptied these once since we set them up and I believe last night's rain completely filled them up. Next year, I think I would like to add a third barrel back here um, and potentially even another barrel up on the ones that feed the irrigation system so that when it does rain and it downpours, we are not missing any of the rain that is coming down because there's nothing worse than looking out the window and seeing the overflow on the rain barrel, just like shooting out water that you are not capturing. Like if you collect rainwater, you know exactly what I mean. And one more thing for good measure, this is not a rain barrel, but we have a mini split unit in our sunroom and the condensation line drains right on the outside of the sunroom and we put a little elbow pipe on it so that we can put a watering can under it when we are running our air conditioning in the sunroom. Um, it gets very hot where we're at. That is definitely the hottest room in the house. And so I was looking at all of the dripping happening from that condensate line and thinking like, why are we not catching this? Then my mom was like, just put a watering can under it. So, so that's exactly what we did. We put a watering can under it. I will show you that. We're not running the air conditioning now, but I will tell you that like this green watering can here will fill up in like a day or two running AC pretty much constantly in the sunroom, which is pretty cool. So this is what I mean here. We just stick the watering can right under this line. And then as we are running the HVAC um, or the mini split unit in our sunroom, which we are not now because it's not that hot out, um, it just slowly drips into here and fills it up in like a day or two, which is pretty cool. All right, so that is a tour of all of our rainwater harvesting capabilities in our backyard. I hope you found it useful or informative in some way. If there is a way to be capturing rainwater, we are going to be doing it. So it's only a matter of time before I add something to the front gutter as well. Uh, so if you have any questions about what we're doing, drop it in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time, happy planting.